once again, thank you for joining. Uh, this is Sophisticated Ignorance Live. I'm going to try to do this more often than not, but these are the real conversations I want to have. And on top of that, um, shout out to everybody that was here just now. Um, I'm going to get, I'm going to get Denisha back in or whoever flows back in. Uh, I should have said that, um, we're going back live. But yes, how's everyone else doing other than that? Um, before we get Miss D back in here, um, I hope, I hope everybody knows that I was going back live. I cut off. That is, that is unfortunate. Okay. Yes, we're back. All right. Let's get some other people in here real quick and then I will get you back on. Oh, good, 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 good. Um, I hope everyone is doing as wonderful as possible. I'm doing, I'm doing okay. Uh, I've been, I've been going through a lot in the sense of, um, different growing pains and experiences. So, uh, this month is looking like a month of growth for me. Uh, so yeah, I'm just trying to, um, yes, I have been using Scotch port. I just used it today. I was, I was washing today. Um, Robbie, welcome back. What's up? Let's, let's get D back in here. Let's continue her point. Um, no, no, you don't have to fight anyone. If anything, um, it's not a matter of you fighting anyone. Uh, you probably have to fight me. <laughs> you probably have to fight me. Robbie, I got you. let's get Denisha back. Let's get her one point in, and then we'll get other people to chat on here. I was trying to, I was trying to warn you that it was going to run out, but you talk, 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 talk. The show is going I was trying to let you know that the time was running out the last time, but you keep chat, 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 chat. I bet you with me being your, with me being your psychic, you're going to be popping by the end of this year. I roll. Carry on. Finish your point. Other people have things to say. Thank you so much. No, I'm just saying to say this. It's just like I, as a, as a, I'm gonna say as a woman, because I can't even say as a black woman, because every woman goes through stuff. Mm -hmm. But as a woman in general, it is so hard to keep up with the Joneses. Correct. It's just like it's like she said, yes, boo. No, seriously, it is so hard to keep up. It's just like, um. Like, how do you fit in? Like, all right, so the new thing is ass and titties. Do I get my ass and titties? Do I risk my life to get Oh, you mean getting it done? I was about to say, yeah. yeah. Do I risk my life? Do I do I do my stomach? Shut your eyes and share what you say. No, but I'm talking, it's not, but, okay, ladies, if you know me, I'm already stacked. Born like that. I said, you know, I'm Jamaican, so born like that. Oh, but for women, all right. All right. <laughs> Lola, she said, hell no. But for women that are not, and I'm talking about my friends, them. You know, everybody, they, they so they, they want a husband so bad that they will go under the knife and kill themselves because everybody's not going to live. Look at Kanye West's mother. Not everybody lives through this. My mom's friend that she works with, she went to um, Dominican Republic. She lost her arm. She had a blood clot and lost her arm Jesus. because she wanted a fat ass at 45. Like, it's just saying, like, and then this is like, okay. The lace front shit right now. That, 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 it's like so much things that we we are so scared to be ourselves. Like I was scared. I don't know what that person said. Bandwagon era. It's a new thing. What that mean? People, What's people, that? People jumping on a trend. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, it's true. And it's like, all right. Like, why? Why do I have to change to fit into y'all world? Mm. Why don't we make our own world? You're absolutely right. Like, what's wrong with making, why don't we make our own trend? Why don't you invent a damn airplane that don't need no gas? Then do stuff like that. Yeah, so, so think about it. All right. The point I got what you're trying to say. No, what I'm trying to say, say is we're so busy worrying about the wrong thing. We don't uh, we don't we don't build up to our potential. Mm -hmm. We don't try to see because God gave us all of us a good ideas. We we have it in us. To be creative, we have it in us, but we don't want to do it. We too are worried about what Tyrone doing around the corner. This is very true. This is very true. Denisha, thank you so much for your words. All these ladies, I'm sure, are snapping their fingers. Uh, make sure to check out the episode with her on the podcast. I'm a boss with Denisha. Make sure to check her out and hear about her story. And if you are in Brooklyn, support her. She makes some bomb ass cup cakes and well, other going? Shit. people coming in where you going where's who going where we going 
I, I have other people that want to say words. Okay. You leave so, me. So make sure to check out Drunken Shots. As I said, if you happen to be in Brooklyn, New York, support. She delivers now. I don't know. Hey, please, every week, support Vincent. Support a black giant. Okay. Thank you so much. Bye, baby. I'll call you uh, back in an hour. All right. I'm sure you will. We'll talk more. Thank you so much Bye. for being a guest on the first uh, ever um, SI Podcast Live. Now, I have another uh, person that is going to be coming through. Um, shout out to everybody here. Um, I have some more topics. Um, we're going to be talking for the next uh, hour or so. But uh, everyone say introduce to my boy, Robbie. What's good, boy? What's going on? You know what it is. It's Robbie Digital, one-third of PSA Zone, New York City Zone. What's going on with you? I'm, I'm Gucci, bro. I'm Gucci. I'm trying to stay alive like everybody else out here. Uh, I've been using that same term since 2016. People ask me how I'm doing. I'm like, um, you know, being black, trying to stay away from police. It's been, it's been, that's been my line for God knows how long. Well, right. Um, yeah. Not, shout, not more than ever. Because More than ever, yeah. Uh, shout out to um to Drunken Shots. She made a lot of interesting points. I'm not gonna take <laughs> I'm why not interesting. Why interesting? Um, for one, the last thing I'm gonna do in 2020 is um, hello Queen, how are you? The last thing I'm gonna do in 2020 is um mute a black woman's experience. That's the last thing I'm gonna do. Um, you know, or silence her and not empathize with her with the experiences that she's had. I think that um, the problem that we're having as Black men is we're, we're getting to this point where we're finally doing the work in self-care and self-therapy and mental health and addressing a lot of issues that we ourselves had that we didn't know we were at, that we were having. Yes. And I think that the problem is, is that for the experience of those who are not taking the due diligence to really find themselves in their happiness, that's why they can't really grow in the relationships that they're in. And I think a lot of people don't talk about that at all. Um, I think the whole boss thing, you know, like you don't want a girl who who's a boss and that 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 this that that's a false narrative. I think that blows my mind. Yeah, it's it's really a false narrative. It's a false narrative. I think that um the problem is people want to be you you have to find who's right for you. And mm-hmm. what your standards may be may not be the standards of someone else. And that's okay. And the problem is, is that a lot of people keep trying to put circles in squares that don't fit. Right. So, and, and, and oftentimes, you know, a lot of people get in relationships and, and get into marriages. And my question probably even for, for drunken shots is like, how much therapy did they do before they got married? How much, did you, right. how much How much? did you really know him? How much did he really know himself? Mm-hmm. Um, I think those are the things that we really kind of miss. Um, I think we, like, we're, we need to take more time to get to, get to know each other and what that really looks like Correct. on a genuine level. I think that's where we miss a lot of miscommunication. It's not a matter of you being a boss and you having your own business. As a creative, I have my own business. I have my own platform. I, you know, I'm, I'm out, I try my best to, you know, create content and constantly push conversation and, and interview people like that. Like no one, no one's denouncing your, your business and your business acumen. I think, um, those who are intimidated by that, they just don't, they don't, they're scared of what they're not doing to measure up. And I think sometimes the problem is, is we, um, what someone needs let someone tell you what they need. Don't Correct. tell them what they need. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of women I've met in my lifetime who are extremely successful, are bosses, and they're not asking you to pay for a dime. They're not asking you to meet them. Have they, they, they have completed what they completed. What they're asking for you, let them tell you what they want. Don't assume what they want. And that's what a lot of times guys do. Like, yo, I gotta be a provider. I gotta be. If she's not asking you for all that money, then don't, don't try to do all that. Don't bite off more than you can chew. But, and it's yeah. early on. But to your point, I think the reason why most men put themselves in that box is because they're trying to, they're trying to fit into the perceptions that most men are placed in, right? 
Well, in, in most cases, men are supposed to be the providers, supposed to provide and do all these things. And when they're not able to fulfill the, those roles, you know what I'm saying? When it's when it's flipped and reversed, when it's the woman that's doing so, they feel like they feel less of a man. They feel like they're not doing enough and all these things. So now their insecurities are bleeding into the relationship and they feel like, oh, I'm not providing them. What am I to this? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just men that lean into that and there's other men that just get more comfortable with that and they don't push themselves to be more. And to the point of, you know, dating someone that's in a boss-like position, and that's men or women alike, you don't, there's, unless that's a person's standards or that's the person's um, expectations from that person, you, the two people don't have to be on that type of same page, right? Because now we're getting into like the B. Simone conversation, where yeah. for those who are not familiar, B. Simone was is a person who's doing some things. Violin. 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 Why? Just no. to be scamming. The nerve. <laughs> the nerve. Nerve. Queens. Queen. Hashtag queen scam too. Okay. <laughs> queen wow. scam too. It's fine. How you, um, how, you, how you talk about nine to five niggas and then you rob the nine to five niggas? The nerve. Because nine, <laughs> nine to five niggas have consistent money. That's why. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm nine to five niggas. So I should know. <laughs> Obviously, she didn't get my money, but that's not the point. Yeah. The point is, you know what I'm saying? Um, if you if you're a boss woman or a boss dude and you are working towards whatever it is and you work for yourself, you know what I'm saying? You should be able to accept anybody for who they are, but at the same time, they that person should understand where you're coming from. And this it has to be come down to understanding, right? Yep. You don't necessarily have to date somebody that has the same flow that you do, as long as they understand what you're about and what you're trying to do and they support you, then then there's a compatibility there. But I think what it is is that people get stuck with, oh, if I'm hustling, then that person has to be hustling right beside me. And that's fine, but not everyone's hustle is the same, right? Yeah, it's not. If that person supports you in other ways and they don't have to be up at 3 a.m. fucking printing labels just like you, that doesn't mean that y'all shouldn't be together. That just that's means true. y'all have different ways of, of getting, to your, getting to your goals. You know what I'm saying? Think, oh, let me just I read some that, comments real quick. Yeah, right, okay. right, 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 right. Um... Sydney says the men who take issue with self-made women are usually the ones who don't have anything going for themselves. This is true. Very true. But this is where open, honest communication comes into play. I do agree. Okay. Um, yeah. get, I get where she was going. She verbalized all wrong. Be Simone. And it was generalization based off her personal experiences. Once again, nothing wrong well, with preferences. That's everything. Everything nothing. is... Uh, th- there's nothing wrong with preferences. I think that's mm-hmm. where we get the miscommunication at, right? Like, you can, what works for you works for you, and that's fine. Mm-hmm. That's okay. Verbalize that. Like, look, I don't need you for this. I'm not looking for you to do that. You know, what we're building is what we're building, and you need to have a clear, honest conversation about that. And people don't do that. I mm-hmm. think where a lot of women is like, well, niggas want mamas, and niggas want this, and niggas want that. I think the problem is where we miss this is that, is I can only speak about my generation. So for mm-hmm. my generation, I am millennial. I'm between the age of 27 and 34. Right. A majority of the 27 and 34 years I know, unfortunately, grew up in single parent households. Mm-hmm. It is what it is. Um, and unfortunately, because of systematic racism, Criminal Act of 1996, a lot of our fathers weren't in the household as much as they should have been. Correct. And I think that sometimes we don't really play how much how important that is going forward so what happens is unfortunately we have a generation of men that's honestly raised as young men to do the bare minimum bare minimum mm. just to, just to step out of prison like yo okay you went to school that's great you got a diploma that's great you went to high school that's great it's always just enough not pushing us to go further go harder go stronger right. um fortunately enough black women has had that opportunity I know a lot more successful black women than I knew successful black men. And right. it's it's society how we teach our black men too. Like, you know, when a kid, when a when a boy falls on the on the ground, like, yo, you're a man, you can't cry, yada, yada, yada. Right. So he never really channels his emotion at all. He never he never processes it, he never channels it, opposed to when a young girl falls on the floor, hey, what's wrong? Who hurt you? What right. happened? So that emotional intelligence is established already. Yep. So what happens when, as you get older, you get this roadblock in between 27 and 28, which I did myself, I can admit, 
27, 28, unfortunately, you know, I thought I knew my dad as much as I did, but I had an identity crisis. I was like, yo, this is not going right. This is not going right. I don't understand why this and this and this and this and this. And it took therapy for me to have a greater self-awareness to move forward and know what I want. And I think sometimes we get we get lost in that. Right. Yep. Have to, yeah, sometimes we also have to be um we have to be honest in ourselves and say like what what this may not work for me and be honest about that. And I think sometimes we don't do that and do that due diligence, man. Like I understand where she's coming from, but that narrative of like niggas when white women, nah, that's that's a false narrative, bro. White women are dangerous. According, in the words of the good brother Reek, the most dangerous thing in the world is a crying white woman. They are more dangerous than MMA, MMA fighters. So, I, don't think... I mean, look, we, we got this message from Pocahontas, the animated film. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> so, even it goes back to them. These white men are dangerous. That's all I need to know. Put that down the screen. So, yeah. <laughs> Disney's been trying to tell us, as fucked up as they are. Um, but let me just read someone else's comment. A shout out to Quinn that says, hey, Quinn. Quinn. to highlight. Uh, there's a lot of reasons relationships lasted back then was because women literally needed men to do the simplest things, and they were also more tolerant in, of disrespect and abuse, right? It's like that Carmichael, it's like the Gerard Carmichael episode with the grandmother, the the father, and the, um, and, and the son. Like, those relationships look very different generationally. Like, right. fortunately, you know, I think, and it's funny that I say that, but we also, like, you know, I know girls now that like put up with what my mother put up with. The ghetto, I refuse. I'm not right. putting up with that. I'm not putting. I'm not. I'm not internalizing my feelings. I'm not sheltering how I feel. I'm not gonna. I want. If I want to be tossed over like rotisserie chicken in bed, that's what I want. And if you can't suffice suffice that, then nigga, I'm gonna go find it. Right. We are way more independent than what we were years ago. The same way guys are like, mm, you know what? I really don't want to do this. So I think that's where we need to, to differentiate. Like, just people need to be more honest about they want what they want. And I think we need to stop living on social media with expectations. Social media definitely <laughs> curates. Social media has an issue of curating what the perfect man or woman should be or shouldn't be and all these standards and preferences. And now we tend to mix them all up in a, in a bowl and then just pick out the ones that sound right for us when it's not necessarily right for us. And we're kind of going based off of what we want to show on social media that our relationships and our lives should become and not oh, Quinn, exactly yeah. sitting down with what we need. And I, Quinn is right. I, Quinn is right on this, yeah. though. Um, Quinn says, uh, sorry, we also make it hard for people to be emotionally honest with us because we tend to ridicule them for expressing an honest intention. So I'll, I'll say, for me, I have recently had issues directly and honestly telling somebody what I thought and what I felt. And as a result, it sullied that relationship. And it, and for me, I understand that I need to do some work in the sense of getting over the concept of disappointing people or hurting people and all that. Mm -hmm. I know that I'm a people pleaser, I've been told, so that's completely transparency there. So I need to, that's something that I need to work on and something that I need to uh, get past because at the end of the day, outside of emotional intelligence, there's also emotional maturity, right? Yep. Um, you know, people... You have to trust that the person that you're engaging with is emotionally mature enough that if you tell them the truth and are completely honest with them, that they'll receive it as such and then give them the opportunity to kind of deal with the emotions in their own way. Right? But you know what the problem is? As millennials, we're, we're hoarders. We're hoarders of emotions. We're hoarders of feelings. We rather finesse a situation than be 110% honest. Correct. And, and I think that's, the, the, that's a big problem where like, Women will be like, well, if you just want to fuck, why don't you just say that? And we'll be like, oh. <gasps> but in the same tune, men, there'll be men that do say that. And it's like, oh, how could you? <laughs> well, <laughs> come on now. <laughs> you can't actually catch up. And when they give you tomato juice, <laughs> there's a problem. Yeah, like, no, I think, yeah, yeah that's yeah, a problem. On. We don't, we, we hoard our things and try to finesse things. And I think there is a conversation about um, to what Quinn was saying about black men protecting black women, we don't do a good job of that at all. Um, I agree. I agree. Um, I'm, 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 I, it's deplorable what Fifty said this week. 
about Oh my gosh, I was gonna talk about that. Yes. That shit was that shit was was deplorable, was deplorable because you dated Vivica Fox, a whole black woman, a whole woman who technically at that time had a way higher social status than no black ass did. So it's like for you to even say that out loud, it, it's preposterous to me. But we need to do a better job at that, at maintaining and protecting black women. This whole narrative that like black women, that when you get successful, you can't be with a black woman. I couldn't see myself at this point in my life. At this point in my life, I could not see myself with with without being with a black woman or a woman of color. Like I couldn't. Like there's too many things that go on in my life that I cannot come home and feel like I get genuine empathy from if it's not from someone who looks like me. Right. I can't. And I think that when a lot of women are talking about protecting, about us standing up for black women, I think it's also us holding our homeboys accountable for the fuck yeah. nigga shit that they do. And we don't. Like, we'll be like, bro, that's about men's. They ain't got really nothing to do with me. Right. We are very, we are very good at pushing a lot of <laughs> accountability or responsibility with that because it's like, all right, yo, that's his business, that's the problem. And, and I don't know, well, I mean, I don't have a large circle of men friends, so mm-hmm. I, I, I can't really speak on this, but from what I've witnessed, um, most men just tend to kind of talk about their mans to other people, but not directly to them. You know what I mean? Oh, that's a fact. Men is gotcha. No, men, because men, <laughs> men won't directly say it to their mans unless yeah. it's some kind of weird situation. But they will say, yo, bro is fucking up, blah, 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 blah. But when it comes to a casual or social setting, oh, yo, what's good, da, 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 you know, you my boy. And it's like, well, but you just said two seconds ago, he shouldn't be fucking with his baby mama because, you know, he ain't good shit. But now he's your mans. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. Let me just go to a couple of comments. Shout out yeah, to everybody. Yeah, shout out to everybody in the chat right now. Um, let me see. The last thing that I read was, yes, Sydney says we got to stop generalizing black men. I know plain black men will ride like the military for a black woman just off go. Very correct. I yeah. concur. Uh, also, Quinn says, I know a couple of myself, but I know way more anti-black black men than I do ones that love and celebrate us. Um, Brooklyn Jim says, because plenty of us are honest just like that and his whole work were taken for granted. So all these things, and to your point, so two things, right? I think some of those black men that try to go for black women, I'm now thinking about the concept of the trophy wife and yep. how that has been in historically been framed as a white woman, right? When you hear trophy wife, you see the, yep. the quintessential white woman who has it all. She's the homemaker, and blah, blah, blah. She's subservient. She's, she's submissive. That's what it is. Yeah, so call her a spade a spade. Yeah, she so, just shut up. That, that's really what it is. Submissive. The problem is, is that, and this is that's a that's a problem between white feminism and black feminism. Mm-hmm. White feminism want a voice. Black feminism want reciprocity. Correct. <laughs> like that's really what it is. Like you, like I think for generations, the problem is we've always put responsibilities on black women to handle. It's like, well, you know, Big Mama did it, so you can do it. Like, okay, your mom was a single parent mom, then yo, you should be able to do it. And it's fucked up that we have this narrative that we do these things. And I can see the frustration where black women are like, nah, like it's the ghetto. I'm not doing it. And it's also right. um it's also an ego thing. I think it's very hard for black men to give up their ego. It is oh, like I think um a lot of people looked at that whole Jay-Z situation and was like, well. How could Jay Z do this? It's like because Sean Carter didn't get Beyonce, Jay Z got Beyonce, and it's hard for you to give up your ego to be to be that connected when that's really all you have. Like I think it's I, I think it's hard for some women, some black women to even understand that. Like yo, like most of the time, like yeah, you're my cheerleader, and I get that, but I have to be my own cheerleader. Like I'm I'm I boost my confidence up so high. That yeah, it's hard for me to relinquish that. We got a lot of people chatting in here. Yeah, we have we have people talking, having conversations. Let's yeah, see what's going let's, on. Let's, let's, yeah. Uh, uh, Quinn says that's true. You don't let a couple of instances money or view of an entire demographic of people go ways road for black men who continue to do so. You know, hardly we don't get the same. Sydney says, "Oh no, we don't do that at all. You get no argument from me. We cape the fuck up for continuously, but that's how we've been for ages." <laughs> all right, so we, th- it is a. We all know there's very solid facts that black women ride for black men. Sometimes, 
I would say blind, but uh, black men, black women ride for black men in the concept of that, you know, they see us as potential partners. So they are willing to be that support system for us no matter what. Black men don't always reciprocate that. And that's where the divide comes in, right? Um, and I don't know whether that comes down to standards. Maybe it does come down to a level of standards that black men have, or me black men aren't, aren't ready to face that challenge or face the reality that a black woman is their equal, right? Because their ego, and as a result, they treat them in a certain way that's not protective. Well, that's because in the, within the black community, there's a patriarchy, a patriarchy that that marginalizes and silences black women. We know mm -hmm. this. Yeah, we know this. Like, I think that's where the where the problem comes from. Like, you want misogyny, but you don't want responsibility, and you can't have both. You can't ask for misogyny and then not put up the responsibility to obtain that misogyny. You just can't be like, yo, I'm a man, and because I'm a man, you got, but if, if you're the man so much, then why you don't handle everything that's supposed to be handled? Right. Why is it, why is she handling everything? That's the same thing, yo, bro. I don't know if you heard, before for July was this big thing, right? Everybody uh, was talking about Frederick Douglass. I did mm -hmm. not know Frederick Douglass had a whole white woman, bro. I never knew this. Never was thought. Like, like, yo, he had a wife, uh, who's a black woman, she passed away years after that, and he married a white woman. I was like, what the fuck? I knew none of this. And I think that's the age-old thing where black people think that white ice is colder. And mm -hmm. it's really it's really sad that, like, black men uh, do these things where, like, their definition of the success is a white woman. And it's terrible when it's really just submissive. And I don't think black women mind being submissive, I think it's they they look at it at what grounds. Right. What grounds do I relinquish that give you that responsibility? Are you gonna hold it down and I can I trust you with that responsibility? Are you gonna manipulate the system with that responsibility? And a lot of times that's what a lot of men do. And, and on top of that, to your point, I think what it also comes down to because the narrative as well is that okay, in my personal opinion, I I, I don't really I don't particularly care if a guy, if a black man has a preference for a white chick or not. That's not really my problem. But what ends up happening is that black men will put down black women and yep. uplift black and white women at the same time. And that's the big issue, right? No one, like, I don't really care who you like, whoever, what kids me. But don't it's put weird. down. It's weird. It's weird. It's weird. It's weird. <laughs> weird flex, but okay. But it's not even a flex, it's just a weeder. But yeah, no. it's, weird, it's weird period. But black men will put down black women. So for example, the whole concept, going back to Fifty real quick, because um, when he was talking about, oh, you know, all these fucking exotic chicks and whatever, and that shit's just wild to me. First and foremost, let's just get into that real quick. Do do y'all think exotic is a slur? When it yes. comes to describing? Because I, I, I have a problem it with it. Like, in the, in the past, I know it was used as a means of oh, all right, you're dealing with a woman of a different background that's not common or not the average for most people to engage with. But now I realize that this is a whole slur, and it's weird as fuck, because it's like, the only shit that you call exotic these days are animals. And it's just like, you only see exotic animals in the zoo. <laughs> so it's like, when you try to mess with an exotic chick, what does that even mean? What is that? What, what are you trying to say here? You know what I mean? So be, that's, Quinn is saying that, not to cut you off, Quinn is saying no, she's like, we're submissive to a man that deserves submission. Simple. And I think that's really what it is. And I think that until we come to terms with what that really looks like and, and as men, we start really holding it down and, and, and holding ourselves accountable and really doing the work and due diligence to better ourselves, we're always going to be behind the eight ball with this. Right. And, and we also need to define what submissive means, right? Because I think when we say the word submissive or subservient, it means that, oh, we are holding the woman down and they are supposed to comply to everything that we need and all of our needs and wants and not have any sort of thing for themselves. We're simply talking about a woman being, cooking for a man or doing all these little light things. Like that's, that's the level of submissive that we should be talking about. But I think it gets muddled in that most men see a woman as below them and that yep. they need to to pander or cater to in order to maintain the relationship. And that's fucked up, right? It's super fucked um, up. Because, because if, it, if it were to be, if there was a level of reciprocity in the relationship, 
and men now need to be subservient to the woman or submissive to the woman. Nah, we don't do that here. Nah, that's not, you know what I'm saying? That's when the ill coach kicks in. It's like men could be, men are able to be submissive to women too. You know what I'm saying? It's not, it's not a one way street. But once again, with submission being defined as holding one, one person down and uplifting the other person, men would never put themselves in that mindset. I think, so it, I think it's. Yeah, but it takes it takes a role, right? Like if my if my if my girl is an entrepreneur, and I'm a nine to five nigga or a creative, in every sense of the word, then you know, so like you said, I, like you said, I am her employee. Whatever she needs me to do, I'm doing for her because she's pursuing what she's pursuing, and she understands what I'm doing. I think that that's where we need to start clearly outlines. It, it's it's messy, it's mixy. I think a lot of men are doing the work though with conversations like this. I think now. It's it's just more or less we have to start count, account, holding accountable black men around us, and until we do that, we're yeah, just going to be talking in circles. Like, oh, no, 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 no. like, and and that's everywhere. Like from the nigga that you know that you cool with to your pastor to your teacher, any nigga, like any nigga you see doing black women wrong, like oh my nigga, you need to do better. Cool. Like you need to do better. Nah, you need to mind your business. Nah. Black women is my business. You need to do that in my business. Period. Correct. Yeah, I agree with you. And you know, I, I'm I'm happy at least. Or I'm proud to say that I at least have black women around me that keep me accountable. Um, mm -hmm. And once again, I don't have a large circle of, of male friends. If anything, I have like family members and a few so, male friends are there. So I mean, I know that they hold me accountable to a point, but it's mainly black women who hold me accountable because I'm able to communicate with them and tell them, you know, what I have been doing, haven't been doing, and they see that. And knowing that they have their standards of what a black man should be and how they should operate, they're letting me know what I've what I've done and be transparent about that. And I'm able to receive it, right? Like I I can sit there and receive that information and know, okay, they're making a point here. Okay. I'm, I'm going to put my ego to the side, even, even if I don't have much of an ego, but I'm putting my ego to the side, listening to them because they're receiving me in a completely different way that men would and realize what I'm doing right and what I'm doing wrong and then take it from there. Right? And also and, don't be manipulative too, right? Like mm -hmm. I think that's what we need to work on where we don't, well, a man is supposed to do this and a woman is supposed to do that. Like if we're not assigning gender roles, if that's where we're going in 2020, then right. don't hit people with a gender role with gender roles like let's 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 call a spade a spade like don't tell me what i'm supposed to do because that's your interpretation of what i'm supposed to do it's like i had a conversation with a cousin once and she was like well a man is supposed to do this and a man is supposed to do that and i looked at it, i was like but you keep getting cheated on so i don't know if you know what a man is supposed to do if you can't keep it right right <laughs> The answer Just like nice. I can, the, the, the same way I can't tell you what a woman is supposed to do if my black ass is single. Clearly, right. I ain't got it right either. I think what we need to do is we really just need to have conversations about getting to know people and deal with people's baggage before we get on the plane. It's the same Absolutely. thing as getting on the plane. Like, yo, there's some things I'm going to allow and there's some things I'm not going to allow. There's mandatory minimums. Niggas, most importantly, before I get, over it, get off this, Niggas need to know their love languages and their apology languages. That's where I'm leaving it at. Um, that is something I have to look into because I didn't know that that's a thing. Um, apology languages. I'm going to write that down. See, look at me writing shit down. Um. <laughs> uh, Bell, a good book I read, uh, Bell's Hook, Book on Love, is very good. Um, Mastery of Love is a very good book. I'm about to, start, I'm about to buy that book. Um, a, a girl request uh, told me to, to read it. So, um, I think that's where we need to start doing doing the work at. Thank you, Sydney. I appreciate it. Um, that that's where we really need to start doing the work at, and and find somebody you're willing to work with. And I think that's where we need to start 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 at. Like, I'm getting older, bro. I can't just be dating people for the sake of dating people. We have to really like slow that shit down. And as creatives, too, the problem is is that we juggle a lot. Like we we. We juggle a lot, and I think that's a, a, a big problem with us. Is like I think we can't be tied down because we just are constantly searching and searching and looking and looking and looking. So I think for me, it's, it's kind of like we have to start tunnel visioning and dating with intent. Dating with Correct. intent is very important. Dating with, with intent, intent is very important. The word of the year for me is attention, yeah. Uh, 
my is read the room. I'm beginning to see that read the room is a, is a quote of the year. Last year it was toxic masculinity. This year right. it's read the room. <laughs> Please yeah. read the room. So yeah, man. Yo, it was good hollering at you. Thank Bobby, you for, no for opening this platform and having this conversation. It was much needed. Um, whenever yeah, you need something, just holler at me, bro. I'm yeah, definitely. Yeah. I'm gonna get you on the show. We're gonna have a, we're gonna have another episode. Um, yeah, we're gonna definitely. Um, Yo, holla at me if anything, moment. too. So I'm, I'm, I'm here. That's a fact. That's a fact. All right. Yo, so it's a pleasure meeting y'all. Y'all have a good one. Yes. Follow Robbie. Check him out. Um, he has his own podcast, the PSA podcast. Um, so check out Robbie, and um, we'll definitely work on getting him on the show. Now, I heard a lot of conversations. I want to invite um, someone else real quick. Uh, she knows who she is um, because the topics. In the chat are very spicy, very spicy. Sydney, welcome to Hi. the IG Live. How are we today? I'm awesome, darling. How are you? I'm Gucci. I see you in these chats, preaching to the women's, preaching to oh, the, listen, preaching to everyone. Okay, Ileana, fix our lives with your words. I was on a thing yesterday, and we were having the same conversation, and I was like, oh, my God. I was like, apparently the entire world is dealing with this nonsense. It's insane. What what nonsense exactly are you talking about? Well, like, as far as dating is concerned, and, and with all of the yeah. people are, are very much more intentional now. Not everybody, but a good amount of us are, are more intentional now. Right. And people are being so much clearer about their requirements, and people are more aware of what they need from a relationship what they will not put up with because mm -hmm. i mean you you know what i have allowed and put up with for the sake of saying i got somebody so now it's like this is the longest i've been single because the second your red flag comes peeking out your pocket i'm out right and because it's yeah. now about intentional Correct. what 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 do you bring to the table but what do i bring to your table what do you need from me, and what do I need from you? Do the two match? No, gotta go. Yeah, and and you know, I I'm, I've recently started um, working on intention myself because I know mm -hmm. in the past that you know I've treated relationships as a means of validating myself, right? And I realized that that doesn't work, right? And it also came down to me going to therapy and understanding my wants and needs and creating those boundaries for myself too, right? Mm -hmm. That's a lot of that's something that certain people don't have they don't have a level of boundaries and they don't have a level of wants and needs so right. when we get into these relationships when we get into these situations where we're kind of catering to what the person wants or catering to what they feel that the person wants as a means of just being a partner or just having a title and all these things and at the end of the day it doesn't work out only because it's like all right you haven't really figured out yourself and on top of that you haven't been honest with yourself and thus force the partner, the person that you're building with, or potentially want to be right. with, right? There's a whole bunch of those things. So now working off with the means of intention, you know, it takes that takes work. And intention is work. And some people are not ready for that work. Yeah. Included. I I last year this time last year, I couldn't even tell you, well, this time last year I was single. But um I mean I'm still single now. But that's not the point. The point is um I'm I, I didn't have an idea of, of of intention, right? I was just kind of yeah. just feeling life out, and and now I'm trying to get to uh, not trying, sorry, I'm getting to that point where intention is important, and you know the person that I'm pursuing, I just want to make sure that they understand where I'm coming from, and it's like it is brutally honest, and it, and it's to the point, it's always to the point where the things that I'm telling this person is just like, whoa, bro, I want no parts. But I would yeah. rather I would rather give all the person the cards than no cards at all, and then they have to figure out the deck. And that, once again, that's a lesson that I had to come into recently, and what I'm going to apply moving forward. So, I, and I know that I have a lot of work to do myself when it comes to kind of just being honest and working through that. But um, intention for some is not easy, you know, because it no. takes a level of transparency that a lot of people aren't ready for. Um, Listen, my friends get mad at me because like. I'll, I'll swipe right, we'll match, and I've listed my life story because I need you to know what you're walking into. Right. Rather than you walking into this without knowing you you are now in my escape room and you can't get out, you don't have all the clues. I right. didn't give you the keys. You don't know how to get out. There's no man outside to press the button for you. 
I need you to know what's up. But now, do you think in certain cases, um, when it comes to that, that there might be a case where it's too much sometimes? Like, I mean, I'm not going to tell you that my daddy wasn't around, but <laughs> like, I will let you know, you know, I am granted now. It's no longer my story that I'm fresh off a heartbreak. I'm not. It's, it's, it, it's been some time. I'm fine now. But before I was like, look, I just got out of something. I'm really not looking for anything serious. I just want someone to spend some time with. If it turns into something, no problem. Understand that I am dating other people at the same time. I'm emotional. I'm creative. I'm busy. And for me, I deal with anxiety and I deal with depression. I need you to know that from jump because I feel like certain things you need to know from jump so that you have the option to stay or go. Oh, look, because then I'm I'm, I feel like, keep, huh? I said, look, I'm a dumb man that just heard what you said and I can't deal with it. Block. Right. Because <laughs> it's like, if I feel like it takes away the your option. Mm-hmm. It's almost like when I meet guys, I'm like, yeah, this is a, uh, this is not my, my real hair. This way, you have the option to be like, I don't like women that wear wigs. Okay, guess what this is. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. So you have the option now to say, I want to be with this woman who who wears a wig because her personality is so much more than this wig on her head, or this just ain't your cup of tea, and you don't have time to get to know me past my wig. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. I feel like so it's me, like a it's a clarity thing. So I mm-hmm. will listen. I have anxiety. I deal with depression. Sometimes I will not be available. I am very forgetful, but I'm also brilliant. I'm hilarious. I make a lot of jokes. Sometimes they're inappropriate. If if it bothers you, let me know. I mean, we all do. We all do. But would you rather, in in that regard, would you rather put all your cards on the table first, or have the other person reveal what they want and then kind of compare notes from there? Oh, I always ask that. Like, I'm on, I'm on both of the dating apps, and as soon as we match, like, you know, we'll have the cute little, what you eat for dinner? You watching movies? I like movies. And then it's, what are you looking for? Oh, I want a girlfriend, and what does that look like to you? Mm. And I've had guys answer very, very straight to the point, and it's been, I'm looking for a girlfriend that's going to feed me, that's going to support me, that's going to hold my hand. And then so my my next question is, oh, that's, that's wonderful, because I'm with all of that. No problem. Right. Are you reciprocating? One guy never responded. Mm. Another one was like, of course I will. I'm going to always buy you food. Buy me food? You don't know what a pots and pans are? I mean, granted, <laughs> buy me food. But I mean, but see, what's, it goes back to that level of merit, of a merit relationship I was talking about earlier, where it's like people think that they're, what they have to bring to the table in the sense of, the things that they could do for you equates to their worth in a relationship, right? Because that is how a lot of us were raised. Mm. Like, growing up, my mom was very self, self, self-reliant. Like, she did everything herself. She did everything for me herself. Like, she was very, I got this. We don't need them. We got this. Mm-hmm. So that's how I've always been. But I've had guys that I've dated be like, you make me feel like you don't need me. Mm. And it, and I had to step back because I was like, in my mind, I was like, oh, you weak. I'm, 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 I'm obviously way too strong for you. But then it was like, hmm, I must not be letting you be the man in this relationship. I plan everything. Yeah. I'm a planner. I got to-do lists. I know where everything is. I know how to get there. I And so like I've had guys like, you make me feel like you don't need me to be here, so I don't want to be here. Mm-hmm. Right. Right, Quinn. And yes, I, yeah. I, and I was like, "Oh, but that, then let me." But that, and my and and then also I've been told I mean, and I was like, "Okay, I'll I'll give you that. I'm aware, I'm aware of the fact that I have a tendency mean, to be assertive, a mean. aggressive, all these things that men, all these terms that men use in order to avoid a woman who has an opinion and a strong voice. That's bullshit. For on their well, end. no, my mama's told me I mean. All right. <laughs> like she's she's heard me have conversations in relationships and been like, I would curse you out. Why are you talking to him like that? And I don't notice I'm doing it. Whoops. <laughs> so now I'm better with it now. So like you know, I, and, I, and I've had male friends be like, you need to be a little softer. He was like, you've been like this our whole lives. Like our entire friendship, you have you. There have been moments, and and he and I have gotten into like knock down, drag out arguments because some things that have come out of my mouth were. Not that much. <laughs> well, and... I, 
right. To your point, I need aggressive and blunt, as Quinn was saying. I need it to a certain extent. You can be aggressive and blunt with me. I don't really care about how you say it. I don't really care about tone in that regard. Like, say say it in the most nastiest way possible. Um, nasty in the sense of <laughs> mean and aggressive. But as long as you're being respectful to me, right? And I, and mm-hmm. I feel like it should be the same thing if I'm trying to tell you something. Like, I'm if I say it rough, then that's fine. But as long as I'm not degrading you, as long as I'm not being disrespectful, as long as I'm not belittling you, but I'm trying to tell you something up front for your benefit, it just it just comes down to you being able to receive it and understand what I'm saying, and not how I'm saying it. I think that's what. See, I'm there is. now. Right, but, but receiving it was not happening. Right, communication gets lost that way because we get caught up with the tone yeah. and not exactly what the message is. Oh yeah, because it for and, and for me it's like oh once you've hurt my feelings. I'm digging up all the evil that's in here, and I'm, I'm oh, I got you covered because now I've been storing up these things in my head, and I got them fired. Wowzer! I had to, I had to pull it back. Mm-hmm. But then, like, I'm noticing, I'm, I'm in the DMV now, and I'm noticing a difference between the guys that I've dated in New York and the guys that I'm meeting down here. The guys that I'm meeting down here are looking for wives, but oh. not, not all of them. I won't say all of them. Mm-hmm. The ones that I've met, for the most part are looking for wives, but not ambitious wives. They are looking for wives to be in the house. And, you know, you can work it on the five, so no problem. Right. Like, I've had guys, like, completely stop talking to me or, like, kind of pull back because I'm busy. I run my own businesses. Two of them. I'm busy. Right. And I was the, But I'll make time to earlier. FaceTime you, but I'm usually on my laptop typing and researching and reading things while I'm talking to you. Mm-hmm. And that was to Denise's point earlier, where it's like, you know, she has... She has a business that she has things going on and right. the men that she's engaging with or encountering aren't uncomfortable with that because it's like, all right, all your attention is to this thing and not to me, the person that right. you should be building with. And that's just like, once again- Then that's not the guy for you. Right. If, if men can't handle women who have things going on, then, mm-hmm. they, then you just don't need to be with them, period. Yeah. I'm, I met a guy, like we hadn't even gone on a full date yet and he was reposting my stuff. What? He was sending me clients. He was he was he was very supportive. He was like, "Wow." He's like, "That's amazing that you're doing this." I'm I'm a support. I'm gonna tell people to support. I know you're not from here. I got you. Oh, he was fun. putting my stuff in his stories, posting it on his page. Whole grown man, like in his little hood, like his page was hood. But in the middle of his page was some big pink tropical picture of me talking about something coming into your hair. And to this day, every now and again, I look at his stories. We have not spoken in months. Not because anything happened. We just kind of, you know, it didn't work. Every now and again, though, I will appear in his stories. And I've gotten, like, two, three clients off of him just wanting to be supportive. So there are, and, like, that's why I was like, you. we got to stop saying all men. There are men who will full-blown support you being, like, you know, on your hustle, on your grind, building something for yourself and for your future. Mm -hmm. One, because they know if I get involved with you, we will have a solid future correct? between the two of us. Because what I've, and, and this is why I was saying like what B. Simone said made sense. It was how she verbalized it. Of course. I know I can't be with somebody who doesn't understand what I do. Now, if you work a nine to five and you get what I do, you understand why the nightstand light is on at 3 a.m. and I'm still on, on my laptop. Cool. But if you work a nine to five and have an issue with the fact that I'm up at 3 a.m. typing on my laptop, then you and I don't belong together. Absolutely. There has to be a level of understanding on both ends. And once again, you don't right. necessarily have to be in the same line of work, but you have to right. understand like, okay, we have a different way of operating. And as long as we're both able to support each other, despite the right. differences, then that then that's where the compromise and that's where all the stuff right. go from there. But then also that underlying issue, issue is money. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. a lot of the times, okay. a lot of these, especially now, a lot of these self-made businesses, we're, and I mean, not me right now, but I'm speaking to Jesus, <laughs> are making more money than people working nine to fives. Mm. And so a lot of times there are men, not all of them, but there are men who are not comfortable with their women making more money than them. Right. Absolutely. Like mm-hmm. I, my, my business coach, that woman makes a million dollars. She's a millionaire and her husband works a regular job. Mm. She's fine. He's fine. Right. Because of- he knew what he signed up for. He helped her to build with, build and get to where she was going. He supported her through that, and she supported him through 
through his mm-hmm. his nine to five job. That's what he wanted to do. I'm not gonna do, just be like, oh, I'm gonna eliminate all the nine to fives. For one, down here, they all work for the government. They all work in IT. Or they all in the military. Right. And then like six of them are photographers. So it's just like <laughs> <laughs> there are options. Right. Of course, and that's good. It's good the fact that you have options. Yes. On top of that, I think. You know, and I don't know the men pool down in the DMV, but it seems like they're accepting yes. they're accepting of women that have their own hustles and doing whatever. And if they are looking for a relationship or a marriage or whatever the case may be, then they they're walking into it expecting, all right, my girl is doing this and I'll support mm-hmm. them however I can, even though I don't know shit about it, but I'll support them because that's my partner and that's what I want to work towards. Right? Oh yeah. And that and that is a matter of the 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 guy putting the ego to the side, putting the insecurities to the side and realize like, yo, if my girl's out here making this money and we both getting the shit together, then that's all that matters. Right. It don't matter who's But that's a, that's matter. a, that's a hard, because I, I, I know men who are in relationships now who have difficulty voicing how they genuinely feel to their partner. But like, like I have a friend, I've, he and I have grown up together. He is going through it. Mm-hmm. And he tells me how he feels all the time. And I'm like, have you said these words in her direction this exact same way? Yeah, and he's like, no. I mean, no, it's so many words. I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> like all the words I'm getting in this three-hour conversation, right. you need to sit her down and take a good three hours and just vent. If you got to cry, cry. Correct. Like he's crying. I'm like, if you got to cry, cry. I agree. I, I've been, I was like, but then, yeah. but then I always say this. When you voice how you feel to somebody, pay attention to how they react to to you, to you voicing your feelings, but it's important that you voice your feelings as just that, your feelings. Correct. It's not fact. It's not opinion. These are your feelings. You know what I mean? Like it's, mm-hmm. it's. I feel like what you said was hurtful to me. You may not have intended it that way, but it hurt. Correct. So now, what that person's re- reaction is? Well, you know, I don't know why you felt that way. Cool. That means you don't respect my feelings as opposed to wow i didn't in, intend on doing that but i'm so sorry that i did what about what i said hurt your feelings mm. why did what i say hurt your feelings ask me questions let's play therapist let's talk it out for sure let's play therapist and ask um, i'd rather you ask me 15 million questions to figure out why i'm so upset than to sit there and be like i don't know why you're so mad for <laughs> when the house is an ass you'll understand like you know i <laughs> i need you to ask me questions Right. But Why are you mad? What's that, wrong? That does come down to healthy communication for sure. And I think mm-hmm. once again, um, you know, men men do need to get more um open with just coming to women. Because you know, you know what, to be honest, and I've been guilty of it too. Um, most people are afraid of how their partner's gonna react. So they would rather talk around them than talk to them. And instead of um and once again, I'm talking to myself as well. Instead of just bracing the fact that people are going to respond either way, um, you know, understand that there is a maturity there. And that even if the person gets upset, at least you're communicating properly and it's not, they're getting upset because right. they're not saying anything. Right. Right. Um, so in that regard, have the conversation. It's going to be tough, but you'll work it out if you two are really about making it work. Right. Because really. that's where passive aggression comes into play. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's where resentment comes into play. So I've been mad at you for six weeks, but I didn't tell y'all I was mad at you for six weeks. So then now every little thing you do down to eating this little cracker in the bed has pissed me off. Yep. And I'm giving you all kind of attitude. And you're like, well, dang, what did I do? I, for, for a good six weeks, I've been mad and you don't know why. You haven't asked and I haven't said anything. Right. And and the te- telepathy that you both have tried to right. build uh, is not right. working because we can't speak from our minds right. yet and ever. But I feel like at this point, though, if we can't have open conversations with our partner, is that really your partner? If you're if if you're afraid to talk to your partner about how you feel, is that really your partner? And then how that how that manifests itself is if your partner has shown you that you openly communicating your feelings is going to be met with resistance and defensive and defensiveness. Either y'all need to have a very different conversation later on Mm -hmm. or. That's not your partner. Because well, anybody that's going to be your partner or your teammate is going to make you feel safe. That's a safety net. Mm. So that means if I think that your breath smells terrible every time you open it, I should be able to tell you that and you receive it as I love you. 
you keep breathing on people, stop. <laughs> fix it. Mood. But I'm not just going to tell you to fix it. If I'm your partner, here, boo, take these Tic Tacs. This is for you. I'm not just going to, I'm not going to make you feel like, eh, your feelings don't matter. Especially as a woman. Hell no. Because one, you're my safety net. My safety net needs to be a good, like, needs to be stable. If you can't voice how you feel to me, you're not stable, and now I'm now I'm unsafe. Because mm-hmm. I'm unsafe with your feelings. Absolutely. Because now you're holding those in more and more and more and more and more. My last relationship, he did not talk about his feelings. Or when he did, it was when he got to the point where it was too late. It was too, right. it was too full up. And it wasn't now him talking about his feelings. It was it's him picking out the fact that my shoe was in the middle of the floor, and it ain't got nothing to do with my shoe. My shoe was always in the middle of the floor. Now you mad about it today? You're not mad about that. Right. It's You're mad about 16 different other things that you never opened your mouth about. Right. We, t- we tend to bottle up all those arguments that we have with ourselves to the person, mm-hmm. and then when it gets to a point where we're just so pissed off at them because of everything we're not saying, right. then it comes it's out just... in one big fucking shit storm. I it's like, but why didn't you say this myself. before? It's like, well, I didn't think you were going to receive it or yeah. listen. And then it turns into a whole, like, but my man, I've been here all the time. We could have talked about this. Right. I used to drive him nuts because I I would every five seconds. Um, listen, I'm not a fan of how you left this plate on the table. Can we move it next time? Thanks. Right. I moved it this time. Put your plate away. Thank you. And that's you being me. Correct. But see, okay, so like Bobby just said, he just he just didn't want to argue. It doesn't have to be an argument. Tone and delivery. It could yeah. be a conversation. Hey, babe, can you move your shoe? Oh my God, I didn't realize I left, I left my shoe there. You tend to leave your shoe in the middle of the floor all the time. I do, don't I? I'm so sorry. I'm going to move my shoe. I might leave my shoe there again tomorrow. Sure, no problem. But I, it's, it's in the back of my mind. Oh, crap. He does not like when I leave my shoe in the middle of the floor. Right. But see, those, those simple conversations could really boil if, once again, just some residual shit that y'all haven't talked about, and then it kind of comes to a, to a head, right? This one I'm by myself now. <laughs> well, well... Well, there it is. Because if we can't have these little conversations in the beginning, sorry, no. <laughs> so, fellas, uh, take note. If you're trying to approach Sydney, uh, make sure that you can communicate about them socks or else. And I mean. What one? <laughs> Somebody well, said, are we you. taking questions, Vixen? Are we taking questions? Well, I have two minutes left in this live. I might have to oh, okay. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back one more time. And we're probably going to do some questions and talk to one more person. Um, but yes, thank you all for joining. For everyone that's joined, thank you so much. So much. I didn't realize it was going to go for this long, but I guess I can talk. I can talk. 